Today we talk about a beast. Its name is misleading. Its rhythm is irregular with variations. And its history is complicated. Today we try to team the beast, that is Finnskogs pols, the pols or polska from the Finnish forest. Hey folkies, so Finnskogs pols the Polska from the Finnish forest is a repertoire that has many complications and we're gonna try to explain and understand what it is and what it isn't and how to play it. A quick definition, Finnskogs Pols is a Pols or Polska, which means that it's a type of music and dance that goes in 3-4. Kinda. Let's say three beats. That's actually more appropriate. But before we talk about the rhythm in details, which is the main feature of this type of tunes, we need to talk about the name and the history because it helps understand a little bit what went on there. First, the name. Pols from the Finnish forest makes us think about Finland, right? Well, it has ties with Finland, but the Finnish forest with capital letters, is actually an area between Sweden and Norway. I know, and this is only the very beginning of the topic. The history of the Finnskogspols goes thusly. In the 1600s, what is nowadays Finland was part of the Kingdom of Sweden. And in the regions called Tavastia, Heme in Finnish, and Savonia, Savo in Finnish, there were people farming with the technique of the slash and burn, where you cut down the trees of a forest area and then burn down the bushes that are remaining in order to get a very fertile soil. Problem, this technique only works if you have a low density population. And the population increased in that region and it became kind of packed with people. Whereas in some areas of mainland Sweden, there were not so many inhabitants. So the government of Sweden suggested to the Finns that were living in these areas to move all the way to mainland Sweden. And many of them did. They were also given some like economic advantages and stuff like that. And they settled in different regions in Sweden, but especially in what is nowadays Western Värmland. There. This region was pretty much inhabited at that moment and was considered quite poor because there had never been any farming, they were mostly forests, it was a bit far away from everything, but due to the technique of slash and burn, the Finns were able to cultivate these lands and to make a living there, although quite a poor one. At first they were considered pretty nicely by the authorities and the Swedish people, but quickly they got a reputation that was not so good, simply because they were speaking another language, they had a different culture, they were doing another kind of agriculture, so there were rumors and legends of them being like sorcerers and not really proper and not really good Christians and all these kind of things. As you can imagine, when there's a group of people living a little bit further away in the wild forest. Due to that and many complex economical political situations, they were actually expulsed in some areas several times, and that's also why they spread to the neighboring Norway. So these forest Finns spread in the region across the border and developed their own culture that was a mix from what they had been before. And with the contact of the regions and the people that were around, so Swedes and Norwegians. And although the region was poor in terms of wealth, it became quite rich in terms of culture, especially what interests us today, music and dance. This is where the Finnskogs Pols was born, and it has very, very strong ties with the short first beat Polskas of the area, especially Vemlands Polska, to the extent that some melodies that are found in both repertoires 
probably were the same tune in the beginning, but just took different paths. For example, this Wermland's Polska. <laughs> got switched and the melodies are slightly different but to my ears at least they are similar enough that I can imagine that they were the same tune at some point before they took different paths. With time the culture of the forest Finns got assimilated into the neighboring cultures and the language survived a little bit but it died out uh, in the 1960s. Yet the music and dance survived pretty well. Many tunes of this repertoire were collected on paper before any recording devices were available. And what is usually a good telltale sign that they are actually Finskuk's poles, although they are usually written in 3-4, is that there is usually a caption saying something along the lines of this tune sounds a little bit too short towards the end, the feeling is rushed, or something like this. Another good telltale sign of Finskog's Pols, written down as regular Polskas, is when you have a name that includes some reference to the devil. As said before, the forest Finns were said to have some trade with the devil, and as this music is irregular in its time signature, has this weird rhythm and also very weird harmonies sometimes, it was often said to be the music of the devil. For example, the Finskog's Pulse I just played before is called, pardon my Swedishized Norwegian, Pukken i Kjerketornet, which means the devil in the church tower. Aside the written uh, collections that could not really describe the rhythm, there might have been some recordings, but I don't know of any. Maybe the tunes were only transmitted by ear from musician to musician and were never recorded from someone who came from the long line of players. This repertoire got some attention during the folk revival in the 1970s, as many other folk repertoires, and it is around 1980 that the first reconstruction of both the music and the dance was conducted and published by Sverre Halbakken. Sverre's reconstruction has been published in a book a DVD and a CD, and I highly recommend all three. It is the main and basically earliest source of a reconstruction of Finskog's Pulse. Throughout the years, other people have digged into the subject and done some research about the Finskog's Pulse, both music and dance. And in 2002, the most well-known album of Finskog's Pulse music was released by Mats Berg Lund, Atle Lien Jensen, Olaf Sata, and Jöran Håkansson. This album and the style of playing is still regarded as the main source by most musicians who learn Finskog's Pulse. There's a link to this album on Spotify in the description and a few other albums as well so you can listen to different research projects and the results for yourself. Okay, now we have described the beast, let's get on to taming it. Fasten your seat belts. here we go. So first, the rhythm itself. In a nutshell, we take a regular 3-4 bar, but we shorten the third bar, hence the name short third beat. So instead of 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1. And this is our starting point. So you can start clapping it and also feeling the weight of each beat downwards. So 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Most polskas have their weights, their accents on three and one, but Finskox Pols has it on one and two, the one being slightly heavier. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. I suggest that you start by listening to some Finskox Pulse music, links, and you clap along and you try to feel it in your body. Down, 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 bounce, down, down, bounce. Let's address the question that I see some of you already ready to ask. Is that actually 5-8? Yeah, but no, <laughs> kind of. If you are used to irregular time signatures and you are used to 5-8 and this kind of rings a bell for you, you can use it as a simplification of Pinskog's Pulse rhythm. Yet it is not entirely correct, it is only a simplification. Because Pinskog's Pulse has variations within its own irregularity, because it was too easy otherwise, you know. Mainly, the first beat is not only the heaviest, it can also be slightly longer. So instead of having two beats that are the same length plus a little one, you have some beats that are slightly stretchy and a little one. Especially the first one is gonna be a little bit bigger sometimes. So if I alternate between fully straight, like equal one and two, and a one that is slightly longer than a two, it will give something like this. Dum 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 dum. It's very subtle, but yet it's important. It's part of it, and in some places, some melodies, some musicians' way of playing, it is really clear that the first beat is slightly longer than the second one. Finskog's pulse is much more about the feeling, where it's heavy, where it goes up and down, the movement rather than the numbers. So try to not think in terms of numbers, but more in terms of feeling in your body. I know this sounds kind of esoteric and not really regular, but that's the point. Finskog's pulse is weird, it is crooked, and if you try to make it straight, you're only gonna simplify it, but you're gonna lose part of what makes it what it is. Now the really hard part of Finskog's Pulse. Let's get into it. Finskog's Pulse has a very straight underdivision of the first beat. Let me introduce to you Taki Takita, which is my way of voicing the rhythm of Finskog's Pulse, the main underlying rhythm. And if I do it straight, as Finskog's Pulse is, it's going to be Taki Takita. Yet if I dot it, it's going to be And here you can already start to hear the problem that might happen to several of you, that has happened to me and many others. We tend to go for a calypso rhythm, as my teacher Mia Marin put it, which would be something like which is found in other types of repertoires. But it's not Finskog's Pulse. Finskog's Pulse is not dotted. It is extremely straight in its first beat. So we really want to have not It's a cool rhythm, but it's not what we want. To help you get this rhythm straight, <laughs> pun intended, you can use your feet. If you are used to stomp, else you can just learn with your hand. So instead of doing just down, down, bounce, down, down, bounce, you can focus on when you go up as well. And you can do down, up, down, bounce, down, up, down, bounce, down, up, down. So if you are someone who uses the feet for understanding, you can do that with your feet. But anyways, we are going to do that with our bow. So we are going to give an equal weight to one and two. So one and two, tada. One and two, tada. One and two, tada. We're going to make it very, very obvious. So we can go on an open string. And. Really, really 
really straight, really, really square, really, really mechanical in this one and two. Same weight on one and two, so far. And to make this a little bit more interesting than open strings, we can start playing a little bit of the Polska Eterion on the Schon, which is maybe the most well-known Finnskogs Pols, thanks to Mats Berglund. focus on the tank 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 one and two once you get really solid with that you can move on to the next step which is that you're going to release a little bit of the weight on the end so the up bow here You keep the same length of bow, but you release a bit the weight when you go on the one and two, which will give not ta ka ka ta ra, but ta ka ta ka ra, ta ka ta ka ra, something more like that. You will very probably start to dot it into a calypso thing. So as soon as this happens, even in a little little bit you go back to marking one and two very mechanically. And you just alternate between the two, with the weight on the up bow and without the weight on the up bow. And with time it should get there, even when you don't actually put the same weight on the end, it will still be straight. Last step with this one, it is to release a little bit of the weight on the Two, so the second beat as well to get the one the first beat to be the heaviest here I actually keep the tonk 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 I kind of like when it's kind of shines through um, but the rest I tend to have the one heavier the end lighter and the two a little bit lighter than the one here be very careful that you don't start doing no 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 I find that using really the same length of bow for da, 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 so one and two is really helping me so think in terms of length which is not the same thing as weight. I know, it's tricky. That is for the basic of Finskogspol's rhythm. What I suggest is that you practice this pattern, the ta ki ta ki ra ki ta ki ta ki ra, um, on different little melodies that you can invent yourself. I mean, it's just whatever you play, it's just the rhythm that is important. <laughs> example you can just invent your own little things and practice round and round so you get this rhythmical pattern behind whatever your fingers are doing pretty much I would also advise you to record yourself when you're playing fixed course pulse because often we try to do something and we think we're actually doing it but it doesn't sound like what we hear so if you record yourself and you watch very intently and listen very carefully what you have just played, you might discover that you are actually dotting the thing while you were sure that you were playing straight. If you are unsure that you are actually getting the rhythm or not, you can always send me some videos. I will not publish them anywhere. I will just watch them myself and I will tell you if it's actually the Finskog's Pulse rhythm or not there yet. I will also advise you to not listen too much to people who are not really on point about Finskog's Pulse. So try not to listen to Finskog's Pulse that are played by Spellmanslogs or amateur people. 
it's not that they're bad, it's just that this is very hard and you need a lot of practice of conscious time and effort put into that and usually amateurs just don't put that energy there, they just want to play and to have a nice time and many Spellmans Lives that I've heard or even that I've played with have a tendency to dot Finscox Pulse all the way. And I mean, even pros, even very good players, Matt Bedling and everything in the CDs, you will hear a little bit of dotting here and there. Yet they, the pros, use the dotted rhythm as like a spice, a variation or ornament to a mostly straight rhythm. Whereas people who have not put in the time and effort to really practice that weird straight rhythm there will play dotted naturally because it's easier and the brain wants to kind of straighten the thing and this is the highway to calypso rhythm. It's a little bit like learning vibrato on violin. You first get a proper intonation and then you can add vibrato because if you start with the vibrato, your intonation is never gonna be on point. It's never gonna get there. And it's a bit similar with Finscook's Pulse. You have to get the straight rhythm first and then you are free to use a bit of dotted when you want. But if you start with the dotted, you're never gonna get the straight rhythm. So until you are solid in your own very straight chak 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 rhythm, try not to listen to too amateur playing. I'm sorry, I'm not disregarding amateur playing. I think it's great that there are Spellman slugs and everything, but for something really specific that is that hard to get, I think it can mess you up quite a bit. This also means that if you meet people who have not put in the time and effort into this rhythm, they will very probably play Finscook's Pulse dotted all the way. And this has been my problem when I have wanted to jam Finscook's Pulse with people from Spainman's Logs. Usually I could just not play with them because I want to play it straight mostly, maybe a bit of dotting here and there as a spice, but I want it straight in, in the basis while many people play it completely dotted all the way and it makes me cringe and I don't like it because I was taught by mostly Miyamarin but also others who really insisted on the straight pattern and I can hear it in the pros recordings even if sometimes they do a bit of dotting. So just be aware that there are different ways of playing and Finscox Pulse many people love it but few actually study it close enough that they manage to get this rhythm. A little bit more information about Finscook's Pulse, the repertoire. It is very much fiddle music, like almost 100% fiddle. It is not Hardingfelle. Hardingfelle is much more on the coast of Norway, and here we are on the border with Sweden, so it's regular fiddle, or in my quite bad Norwegian, flatfelle, but still fiddles in open tunings. Mostly A bass, so instead of G, we will have an A. Very, very common. Most Finskog's Pulse tunes are in A bass, but you might also find A E A E, which I personally tend to play on its equivalent G D G D. Pretty much the same thing, same intervals. Last but not least, as we are on pretty much open tunings on fiddle, it's the perfect repertoire to put double stops all the way. That is all for the Finskog Pulse playing so far. In the coming weeks, I will give you some Finks Cooks Pulse tunes to play, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and to activate the bell to get the notifications for the coming videos. If you like my work, both my music and my teaching of stuff, you can support me on Patreon, link in the description. That would be very appreciated. I still don't get any money from YouTube because I don't like advertisement. As usual, I prefer to get more human contact with you people than just buttons and numbers. They're good, but I would really appreciate if you would write something to me in the comments. If you don't know what to write, you can just type The Finnish forest is not in Finland, and I will know that you have watched this video until the end. Huge thanks to my patrons for their support and to all of you who have watched this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you will manage to tame this beast that is the Finns Cooks Pulse. If you don't manage yet, it's not that big of a deal. There are lots of other nice repertoires in Scandinavia. Maybe you can come back to it later, or even if it never happens, that's fine. But I highly hope that you will manage, because I think it's a beautiful repertoire and I love it. And so I will leave you now and go play some more Finns Cooks Pulse. Here you go.